Hello everyone, my name is Colt and I work with Sandstone Care. Thank you for tuning in to the second episode of the Weird Freaky Brain Science of Drugs. You'll recall from the first episode that we learned the three ways in which all drugs are similar. If you haven't seen it yet, please close this video and go to episode one, where you can learn the weird freaky brain science of all drugs. Today, we're going to take those three ways and apply them to one specific neurotransmitter, serotonin. So, serotonin is the brain chemical that helps regulate mood and sleep. Helps regulate sleep cycles. So serotonin really regulates a whole lot of things. It regulates our hunger response and our need for social interaction and our sex drive and regulates a lot of things. But today we're just going to talk about mood and sleep. If someone naturally has high levels of serotonin in their brain, that person might be happy or joyous or elated or maybe just content. And if someone in the moment has low levels of serotonin, that person might be ultra mega emo kind of sad. And if it happens for a long period of time, it could be depression, right? Depression can be caused by fewer workers or fewer factories in the serotonin areas. So, in the first episode, we learned the three ways in which all drugs are similar. The three ways in which all drugs are similar. One, in order to get into the brain, it has to dress up as a natural neurotransmitter. Today, we're talking about serotonin. Two, once it does get in, once it fools the bouncer and it floods the gap, we run the risk of our factories shutting down, which is the risk of withdrawal. And we run the risk of ice on our receptors, which is the risk of tolerance. So, who has heard of this stuff? MDMA. What other names does it go by? Yeah, ecstasy, molly, E, X has a few different names, right? But if we're talking about MDMA, MDMA is the drug that dresses up as serotonin. So if someone is using MDMA, it's getting across the bouncer, dressing up as serotonin. Floods the gap with fake serotonin. So when the serotonin workers in their serotonin factories look out the window, and they see the flood of serotonin in their streets, and they choose to quit, and the factories shut down, it means that this person is not getting real or not getting fake serotonin. And if a person is not getting real or not getting fake serotonin, if we take a snapshot of a person during ecstasy withdrawal, there's a chance that that person could checkbox enough of the diagnostic criteria for depression to be diagnosed as having depression and to be given depression treatments and to be given depression medications. And it doesn't mean that that person's brain naturally has depression. It means that the symptoms of ecstasy withdrawal show up with the same symptoms as depression. And this is one of the reasons that ecstasy has the highest rate of suicide during withdrawal from any drug, is that the withdrawal from ecstasy shows up just like depression. Now, I hope that one day we'll have a chance to do like a whole hour on psychedelics, but MDMA is not the only one that dresses up as serotonin. Also, LSD, peyote, psilocybin mushrooms dress up as serotonin. You are now the ambassadors of this knowledge. Now that you know this, I hope that you take this info and spread it. And I'm thankful for your time today, folks.